Well, she is the final word when it comes to legal cases in Minnesota. The new head of Minnesota Supreme Court is a few weeks into the job. She took a few minutes out of her busy schedule to sit down with me and talk about the change she is making and the fun she is having. I am enjoying it. It is a serious job, but I, I love what I do. Natalie Hudson is the new Chief Justice of Minnesota's highest court. We're the only court that can change the law in that respect in Minnesota. And so um, it's an awesome responsibility as well. And uh, the seven of us take that responsibility very seriously. The gavel first got her attention when she was young, when her cousin went to law school. And we would talk all the time about what he was studying in law school and what he was doing. And I thought, that's fascinating to be in a position to have a say in the development of the law was was a powerful uh, a powerful image for me and a powerful idea for me. An idea she honed in on in Minnesota. At the height of the civil rights era, her family moved to the state from Missouri, her father becoming part of that historic moment. He was the first uh, black football coach um, at a predominantly white um, institution, and white uh, college. In the, certainly in the modern football era. Um, we didn't realize that at the time. You know, that certainly wasn't on his radar. And, you know, it's one of those things, he was just about coaching. My dad was a coach's coach. And he was just thrilled to have the opportunity to coach at the college, you know, at the collegiate level. And, uh, and he took that position. Um, and, you know, it, it was at the height of, in the civil rights era, you know, it was difficult for him on, on many, many fronts. Um, you know, I don't think he even realized what a pioneer he was until sort of after the fact. What were some of the things he faced? You know, there were times uh, for a while, McAllister was called Black Callister, you know, those kinds of things. Um, because of your dad? Because of my dad, yeah, yeah. But, you know, he persevered, you know, and what I remember most about that is he rarely talked about that, you know what I mean? He was so focused on what he was trying to do and building relationships with his players. And uh, I must say, though, you know, uh, and I think this is often the case for all of the negatives, and those were very hurtful comments. I think the family, we were more hurt and angered by it than he was. There were also a number of white players who rallied around my dad and who remained friends with my dad long after the playing days were over and, um, and uh, are friends of mine as well. Um, and there were, there are always good people and there were then too. He was a unifier and, and for that, you know, um, his players loved him. And I was just talking with one of his players like two days ago and, um, just talking about, you know, uh, your dad would be so proud. And uh, what so, did that mean to you? Yeah. Oh, it was it was just powerful. And there's much to be proud of. She too is making history as the state's first black chief justice. But it's important. It's important for the community to see that um, excellence comes in all races and ethnicities and genders and uh, f forms of ability. And I think it's as important for the white community to, to, to see that as it is for the black community to see that, to, to again, to normalize that and honored by it. But of course, I want also to be known as someone who has worked hard and who has uh, achieved what I've achieved on, on my merit. Um, and, and I think that, I think that is recognized uh, by, by the community. Those two things can go together. Some things she plans to work on, making it easier for people to navigate the courts. She wants more virtual hearings. And now, more paralegals can help with things like family court or tenant issues. Making sure our justice system is accessible to everyone and, and trying to increase the public's trust and confidence in the judicial system. And so I want to keep working on that access piece. Um, because the justice system is not just for people who can afford it. She's making things happen while balancing a tight-knit family. Her husband is a retired chaplain for St. Paul PD. Her son, an attorney too. My husband and I have a saying that, you know, it's okay to have white space on your calendar and say I'm committed to that white space because that, that commitment is to myself, you know, for rest or for time with my family. 
and you just have to, to know to value those. Balance at home as she works to balance the scales of justice. To dream of something and then to have that uh, come to fruition, so I feel blessed. But it feels good. It does, it does. Well, the chief tells me in her spare time, she loves to take long walks and she absolutely loves animals. In fact, before she fell in love with law, she was planning to become a veterinarian.